In this video, I will talk about one of the new features of ProtoStructure 2022, which is the feature of defining supports for beams. When we examine the sample model, we see that structural elements such as beams, braces and trusses are directly or indirectly connected to the columns and load is transferred from the columns to the foundation at zero elevation. Therefore, the supports are positioned at the lower ends of the columns. When we look at the support placements, when we examine the support conditions at the points where the columns are connected to the foundation, we see the support type assigned by protostructure by default. Square-shaped boxes represent the fixed support. When defining the support, first of all, it is necessary to set the support types, in this we pass to the support types menu in the model menu. Here we can add new support types and quickly assign support types in the X and Y directions. We can also define the spring constants by adjusting the freedoms in the global X, Y and Z directions. Now, let's define a new support type. The default support type of the Prada structure shows the feature of fixed support in X and Y directions. Let's create pin support here. In this case, I tick the pin support type options in X and Y directions. As you may see, the freedoms in the global directions are adjusted automatically. You may also uncheck this section if you wish. Let's define a new support type, this time a support with different properties in the X direction and in the Y direction. I am defining a support with pin in X direction and fixed in Y direction. Let's define a roller support type as a different support type. This time, I select the roller in the X direction and the fixed in the Y direction and close the selection with OK. While defining the support for the columns, we open the properties window of the columns and we can change the support type from the support type section in the 3D tab. Here, the support type is selected by default. When we change this option to pin support and press the update button, the support icon changes visually. Support definitions may be assigned to beams and frame members in a similar to columns. Let's create a new beam by choosing a beam from the steel elements section in the model menu. The beam that we will create may be connected to any element at one point or it can be at a free point in space. We see the I and J ends on the beam with boxes. We can toggle the appearance of these boxes from the visual interrogation window. After adding the beam, first of all, after closing the freedoms at the I and J ends, we can assign the support type for the I and J ends from the support type section in the 3D tab. For example, let's set the default support type for the I end, that is, the support type that is fixed in both directions. For the Y end, let's select the update by assigning the pin connection type. Thus, we obtain the support views at the end points of the beam. The square-shaped view from the support views expresses the definition of fixed support. Let's create a new beam element and change the support type at the J end this time. This time, we see the circular option, that is, this point was added with an pin connection in the Y direction and a fixed connection in the X direction. In the new beam, let's mark the roller support type at the J end and press the update button. If you pay attention this time, there is no sign in the Y direction, this marking refers to the roller support type. Similarly, 
Let's do the same for the frame members. After creating the frame member, we pass to the 3D tab, and here I assign the support types for the I and J ends. Let's assign pin support type again to J end and press update. Similarly, let's end the application by assigning the fixed support type in one direction, and the pin support type in the other direction, and the pin support type in one direction, and roller support type in the other direction. Platform systems can be added in this way in space. In support types, you may add secondary beams between the beams after assigning them to the beams. Of course, in this case, the support definitions come together, and we can create our model by canceling the support assignments at the I and J ends from the 3D section and pressing the update button. After this stage, we can analyze the building and analyze the results of the analysis on the mathematical model. At the same time, we can examine the reactions occurring on the supports and the reactions on the frame members from the member loads section. After the building analysis is completed, we open the post analysis reports option in the reports menu to read the internal forces in the elements. In this section, a selection list may be created on the basis of floor or member type. For example, let's choose beams which is K146 and K147. Similarly, frame member selection may be made. Then, after making a selection, we transfer our selections to the selection list on the right, and here we choose next by choosing. Elements may be selected as structural elements and frame members. Again, after choosing the K146 and K147 beams, we choose forward. This time we choose in which load case or in which combination the internal forces can be read. Here let's select all load combinations and load cases. As we continue, we can create axial loads, shear loads and moment loads by marking them to torsional loads. We can choose the output method in TXT or CSV formats. Let's continue by choosing the CSV format. Then, when generate report is selected, the internal forces that occur are listed according to the relevant load case. Here we can see how much load each element has. We can examine the model on the analytical model. We can make the necessary examinations by opening the mathematical model with the building analysis model option in the analysis menu. In this video, we examined how to define supports for beams and columns. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.